Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing some testing on aluminum fill rod. This company sent me these samples. You can take a pause and read this if you want. So they're sponsoring this video and then I've had this fill rod for years. I probably ordered it on Amazon or something, eBay. And then we have Lincoln Super Glaze 2 we'll be testing. All these are 5356 fill rod. So these two are the only ones that I have in 330 seconds. So we'll test those back to back first. Okay, I'm gonna pull one out of the middle of each box. So it's, I guess, probably less likely to be bent at all from shipping. Okay, for reference, I'm gonna mark the Lincoln one red. So the first difference is this Lincoln rod. They stamp a flat area in it to put the numbering which kind of bothers me because you can see it's it's got a little bit of a bend to it and then if you're doing something real intricate welding you hit this spot and it's actually less material because when they squish it it lengthens too so for per length you're getting less fill rod and if you're halfway through a weld that'll actually show up in your weld it's not too big of a deal for most stuff but if you're doing something really you want really precise it can be an issue. And then this Aluma Glide, let's look at that one. It, they just have a stamp that conforms around the, the radius of it, which I like that better because you don't even notice that when you're welding. And then the next thing is the, um, let's see, the Lincoln Rod has a much cleaner, straighter cut on the tip, which that's nitpicking, that really doesn't matter that much. Okay, this is pretty important though. We'll do a wipe down test to see how clean they are right out of the box. I'm trying to do this as equal as possible. Okay, that was the Lincoln rod. Flip that paper towel over. That's the Aluma Glide rod. About the same. Straightness test. With the Lincoln here, I don't know how good you can see that, but it's, they're both curved a little bit, but the Lincoln one is more curved. And that's, that can be kind of annoying when you're, when you're feeding the rod, the weight of it will actually pull, pull down. I prefer just as straight, straighter rod as possible. Here, let me see if I can get you a better view of this. Get down low. Let's see how that Lincoln rod curls out more at the ends. But only testing one of each rod isn't a good way to do it, so we'll test, we'll take a look at a bunch of them. Oh, not that one. Okay, give the table a good whack so they are all resting the same. So yeah, those Lincoln ones do have a little bit more of a bend to them. Back to this flat real quick before I forget. So whenever I was building those intake elbows, I would I would just snip that off if I was starting well just to make sure that I had straight even rod. Aluma Glide. Lincoln. So it's not touching the table. OK, 
Okay, that's kind of weird. Weighs a little bit more. Get in here and spin it. Get an average. Okay, so it looks like that Lincoln rod is a little bit thicker and more uh, concentric, I guess you'd say. But I don't know if that really matters because they say they send you, what was it? I think they said 10 pounds. So if you're getting 10 pounds of aluminum rod, you're getting 10 pounds, but just something to note. But the Lincoln rod is more accurately 330 seconds. That's the decimal for 332. Okay, let's see which one breaks easier. First, let's do a hand test. I'm trying to get it to bend over here on itself. Oh, I heard it, heard it fracture and felt it inside a little bit. You probably can't see it. Right there on the top. So that Alumaglide felt like it bent a lot easier, but that might part of that might be because the diameter is a hair smaller. And that one didn't. That one didn't crack. Okay, let's do a, another one. Make sure I'm using the same stuff here. Okay, Lincoln again. Did you hear that? Right there, dead center on top. Okay, Loom Glide again. Okay, that one held up too. So two, both Lincolns, I heard them snap, and those they didn't. But, I don't know, you don't really... So that could mean a lot of different things. That could just mean that this is more rigid. All the... Everything it's composed of, maybe it has more stuff to make it more rigid. Which could be good when you're welding something so it's stiffer, but... This, to me, seems like it would be less likely to break under like repetitive flexing but softer. And then all that could change once you heat it up and weld it into the part, so take that for what it is. Here, we'll pull them back apart and see if they completely snap. I'll try to get it to snap, there we go. That one's holding up a lot better. The rod kind of work hardens when you do this. It's See how it's starting to bend over here? It's getting stiff at the first bend, and then doing that. Okay, after a lot of wiggling, that Alumaglide broke too.
too much wiggling around in the vise while they were trying to cool. Okay, high tech tug of war test here. We got this one's the Lincoln rod, weld joint, and then the Aluma glides here. Okay, I don't know what I was really expecting with that. That really doesn't mean anything because this rod was thinner, so you'd think it would break first, and then it broke right at the weld joint, barely on the Alumaglide side, but that could have just been because maybe it was barely thinner right there at the fracture point too. The right way to test them for tensile strength would be to put them in a, a pole tester that just clamped each one individually, but that equipment's above my pay grade. Okay, enough blah, 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 let's get to welding. Eighth inch china rod first. That one flowed in real nice. Nice shiny appearance on top. Okay, Luma Glide.
pretty much the same. Nothing, I wouldn't be able to tell a blind test difference. Okay, 330 seconds, Lincoln Super Glaze. Glide rod. Back to Lincoln. I welded that first one the best. These other ones got a little wonky, but as far as the filler rod goes, it's still wetting in the same and shine in the same so I don't know super glaze is a nice name for it to sell it but it might just be a gimmick thanks for watching as always I'm using the TIG button variable amperage control box that replaces the foot pedal today I'm trying out this longer pressure sensor it's kind of nice because you can put your finger wherever you want without sliding, without having to slide the button back and forth, but I don't think it's going to be nearly as durable, and I don't think it's any more accurate after doing quite a bit of testing, but I'm going to keep using it and see how it works. I got rid of the old, or the newer black truck and bought this older one, just because it's simpler. Let me know if you guys are interested in any fix-up videos on this. I need to make, probably, make a better looking step for it and then a frame deck to walk on to get into the shop. I don't know, there's a lot of stuff. It needs a lot of work, but uh, they're like restoring that old aluminum, ba aluminum badge, making it new. Anyways, let me know in the comments. Thanks.